Hello everyone, I'm Pratap Kumar and uh, I am here to talk about a very well-known ruler of India. However, very loss, less talked about in public. Um, I visited Qutub Minar a, a few days ago and I was wondering that all the major rulers of Delhi Sultanate, I mean, the Khiljis and the slave dynasty rulers and the Tughlaqs, all of them are mentioned there. But one of a very prominent name which we often forget is the famous Razia Sultan. And even if you talk to the common masses of Delhi, they know very less about Razia. They know about Tughlaqs, they know about us uh, to an extent about uh, Khiljis, they know about Lodi, since there is this, this famous, there's this famous Lodi garden. Those, so they, uh, from these names, there's this Tubalka Bad Kela, and uh, there are the cities established by the Khiljis, the, uh, the famous Alauddin Khilji. There is Alai Minar, Alai Darwaza. So people do know about the Khiljis, the Lodis, and the Tughlaqs, but with the popularity of all these major dynasties of Delhi Sultanates. And of course, people do know about Qutub Dinar by the famous Qutub Minar and then Ildut Mish. So within all these famous personalities, one major personality which gets lost is Mirazia Sultan. And there are two reasons behind this, I mean, as far as I can figure out as a student of history. The first one is her being a woman, of course, because she is the one who is, uh, who is claimed to be the first rural, uh, first ruler of an empire in India. I mean, there have been rulers, there have been women rulers in India before Razia Sultan also, but they did not control an empire. They did not control a sultanate. So, I mean, so we can find the names like Prabhavati Gupta from ancient India, from the times of Guptas. The, the same Prabhavati Gupta who married, I think if I'm not wrong, she married one of the rulers of Pakataka dynasties. And her inscriptions are found wherein she has been bestowed with so many achievements, etc., etc. Then we get the name of uh, the famous, uh, the famous uh, queen of Kashmir named as Dinta. It was, I think, the 11th or 12th century AD when she ruled Kashmir. When uh, This was the same time when Raj Tarangini was being written by Kalhan, the first history book of India. So th therein she, he also mentions about Ditta. The, the stories of brutality of Ditta are very famous, that she murdered her whole family. That there are stories something like this, that she murdered her whole family to become the ruler. She murdered all her brothers and all the claimants of the uh, throne. And even when she became the ruler, she her uh, cruel behavior did not change. So, yeah, there have been some powerful names in in the past before Razia also. But the fact that they controlled only a small part of kingdoms, just I mean, while Razia Sultana controlled a whole empire or a sultanate back then, as it was known. Uh, the period of Razia was merely for four years, but still it is an important period in Delhi Sultanate, the, the history of Delhi Sultanate, not because of its political achievements. Razia could not achieve much politically. But some of the trends that she broke was very important according to me, for which she should be talked about, for which she should be known throughout India, throughout at least the people of Delhi should know about her. Um, before starting the story of Razia, we can talk a bit about how was the political situation before she was enthroned. So, uh, Muhammad Ghori comes to India, everyone knows before that, Ghaznavi King, Mahmud of Ghaznavi, then Muhammad Ghori. And then, as the story, short story goes, Muhammad Ghori then establishes one of his, uh, one of his slaves named as Kutubuddin Avak in Delhi, and he goes back to his to rule his own empire, and he leaves Delhi on the charge of Kutubuddin Avak, who later on this, I mean, announces himself as the first Sultan of Delhi. After Kutubuddin Avak comes the famous Ildutmish, the Ildutmish. I mean, if you ask me who is your favorite ruler in Delhi Sultanate, I wouldn't name Alauddin Khilji. Of course, Alauddin Khilji did magnificent things. But uh, by the time of Alauddin Khilji, most of the empire was under control. Most of the empire was already created. So 
uh, his market policy and all the other policies became very firm. So he could bring in these changes because there was a level of certain I mean, stability within the North Indian Empire, North Indian Delhi Sultan that was already created. But before the Khilji Empire, if you ask me who were, who were the main, I mean, who were the most favorite rulers according to you, I would say Iltutmish and Balban. In fact, Balban more than Iltutmish. So, yeah, after Kutubuddin Nawak came Iltutmish and Iltutmish had, I think, six sons, if I'm not wrong. I, I may be wrong. I'm forgetting the exact number of sons. But, yes, he had so many sons who could become the king, who could become the sultan. He had so many minor sons. He had so many minor sons. Who, and he had a, a daughter called Razia Sultan. I mean, Razia, of course. He, she was called Radhia Bint Iltutmish. So, so Bint in... Uh, Persian, I think it's, uh, if I'm not wrong, it means Beti. And of course, Bint Iltutmish means Iltutmish ki Beti, Radhiya. So, Radhiya is the Persian uh, word for Razia. Um, before passing away, before the death of Iltutmish, he had announced that his sons, none of his sons, in fact, would uh, follow him as ruler. And the person who, whom he nominated was none other than Razia Sultan. And this has happened, I mean, if as far as my knowledge goes, this must have happened for the first time in history when any ruler is claiming that my daughter will become the next ruler and not my one of my sons, not my eldest son or not my, one of my sons, but my daughter. He openly claimed that my daughter is uh, more eligible to become the next Sultan. I mean, none of my sons can compete the qualities that my daughter has got. So, this was in itself a special occasion in the history of India. Cut to 1236 when Iltutmish dies. And I think there was this uh, quick succession of three to four rulers, one by one. Uh, very quick changes happened. The, the faction which was doing this with the throne was the famous Turkani Chihilgani or the, the Corps of 40 as they are known historically. Turkani Chihilgani. So, 40 uh, logo ka, 40 nobles ka ek group tha jo ki court mein bohat power wield karta tha aur jab chahata tha tab ruler wo apne hisaab se change kar sakte the wo 40 nobles. Jab chahate the wo change karte the. To uh, jis ruler ne in 40 nobles ki monopoly ko finally toda tha wo tha Balban jo ki Razia ke baad aaya. But Razia ke rule tak in 40 nobles ka uh, Delhi ke court mein Delhi Sultan ke court mein kafi dabdaba raha. So before, after the, I mean, after the death of Iltutmish, three to four quick successions happened, and then uh, the nobles of Delhi Sultanate thought of putting in, I mean, putting in a ruler. He he was known as Rukmuddin. Rukmuddin was half son of Iltutmish. So Razia's enthronement was also full of challenges. It was not as if Iltutmish had, had announced her her to be the next successor. That she would be automatically be, be the next successor. It, it didn't go that swift. So even his even her enthronement was full of challenges. So the nobles uh, who wielded power in the court of Delhi, they enthroned Rukmuddin as the uh, next ruler. And as the sources say, he was full, uh, he was very ignorant and he was full uh, with all sorts of pleasures. He was he had no political interests and he would not even be present in the courts most of the time. In fact, Rukmuddin Firuz ke baare mein ye baate ki jati hai ki uh, usne political kaam kaaj sara chhod diya aur uh, most of the time jitne bhi political decisions hoti thi wo Rukmuddin Firuz ke behalf pe uh, Shah Turkan liya karti thi. Or uh, Shah Turkan, Juthi, who was what Haram ki head over the, the harem of Delhi Sultanate. So, I mean, we know that the, both during the uh, Delhi Sultanate and the Mughal Empire, the women of the harem wielded enormous amount of power. We have heard of the story of Nur Jaha, Shah, Shah uh, sorry, uh, Jahanara, Roshanara. We have heard about Maham Anga, who, who, ran, who ran a petty court government uh, to control Akbar after, after the 
uh, after the control of control of what was his name of Fakildar Bairam Khan after the control of Bairam Khan over Akbar ended after the uh, after the yeah after he was uh, exiled and he was sent away to Mecca then uh, Mahamanga took the control of Akbar's state of affairs anyhow coming back to the topic so Rukmudin Firuz was very much immersed in pleasure and he would not take political interests and most of the political affairs were left to left for Shah Turkan to uh, manage. And the neither the people nor the uh, nobles, even the nobles who recruited Rabnuddin Firoz were not happy with his uh, way of functioning. Or Yahi Vaktha Jab Razia ne apne liye ek chaga create karni shuru ki, Dilli ke logon ke beach or Dilli ke court me. Renewali Nobles ke beach. Rukhnuddin ki instability ka fayda ultimately Razia ko milta hai. Or Razia apne liye ek argument create karti hai. Apne liye ek logon ka hojo me kat karti hai. Jo uske sport pe aate hai. Or finally wo khud ko sultan mushit karti hai. And in order to prepare a ground, when I think this happened for the first time in the history of entire world, because this was the time when rulers would be replaced by other rulers, either by the war of succession or by the murder of erstwhile ruler. So, ya to purane rulers ki ka murder kar diya jata tha, aur naya ruler koi establish kar diya tha khud ko, ya to unhi ka koi beta murder kar diya tha, ya to betoon ke beech ek struggle hota tha, political struggle hota tha, aur succession struggle mein jo jeeta tha, wo ruler banta tha. But Razia ne in dono mein se koi rasta nahi apnaya. Na hi Rukhnuddin ka murder hota hai. Neither she plans any sort of conspiracy against against Rukhnuddin. Nor she has to involve herself in any sort of political struggle of succession. If she doesn't defeat anyone fighting, what she does is extremely dependent upon her diplomatic skills. So she, I think she she would be the first ruler in the history of the world. I mean. Uh, there may be others, but she would be one of the most rarest rulers, those rarest rulers, who in such a time are the king, when the succession and wars are the same way to become the king. But she won on the merit, she won on the merit of diplomacy. She won because of her diplomatic skills. So if there are such a king, then there is a name of Razia. It's not just because she is the first woman uh, ruler of India or she's the first woman uh, Sultan of India but also because she might be the one amongst the rarest who won because of her diplomacy in the times where murder or political struggle ek aam tarika tha, rule karne ka. so what she does is she, she goes to this uh, Jama Masjid of uh, Delhi Sultanate I think if it would have been the famous Kubatul Islam Mosque which is just beside the Kutub Minar I mean, uh, I'm not sure because us waqt ka jama masjid jaha tak mujhe pata hai Kuvatul Islam Mosque hita. Or we can masjid rahe hoon no doubt. But jaha tak jama masjid ki baat hai kyunki sources mein jama masjid hi mention hai ki unki Delhi ke jama masjid mein woh jati hai aur wahan pe uska famous bhaashan hai. Wohin bhi logon ko woh ikattha karti hai aur apna ground prepare karti hai apni apni taavidari ka ki asli ruler mein hoon. Mujhe hoona chahi asli ruler. So, she says ki mere walid ne mere Walid ne, jo ki iltutmish hai, unho ne mujhe ruler appoint kiya tha, mujhe successor ghoshit kiya tha, mere bhaiyo ko nahi, mere kisi half brother ko nahi. And I am the rightful heir to the throne. And Rukhuddin is not an able ruler, therefore I should be on the throne. And before, I mean, before opening up her speech, what she did diplomatically was to take the ring leaders into her confidence. So, जो भी court nobles थे, जो कि रुपनुदीन के support में थे तब तक, उनमें से कुछ ring leaders को जिनको वो control कर सकती थी, तीन चार को वो अपने control में लेती है, और अपने लिए एक court के अंदर ही ground prepare पहले ही कर लेती है, और तब जाकर जामा मस्जिद में खुलेआम public को appeal करती हुई वो अपनी तावेदारी पेश करती है, तो ये इस किस्म का मेरे ख्याल से कोई पहला ही ऐसा of course, challenges are in Razia's responsibility. First of all, the first challenge that comes to Razia is 
ऑर्थोडॉक्स मुस्लिम का जो आर्ग्यूमेंट था उसकी तरफ से आता है जो उलेमाज थे जो काजीज थे उनके हिसाब से ऑफकोर्स कोई औरत रूलर नहीं हो सकती सल्तनत का तो सबसे बड़ा चैलेंज तो यही था इनफैक्ट ये एक बड़ा बहुत बड़ा रीजन रहता है कि क्यों रजिया सुल्तान का मर्डर कर दिया जाता है क्यों नोबल्स वही नोबल्स जो कभी रजिया सुल्तान को सपोर्ट कर रहे होते हैं वो भी एक किस्म से उसको पूरी तरह से खुलेआम सपोर्ट नहीं दे पाते क्योंकि उनके अंदर भी ये जो भाव है कि कोई औरत रूलर नहीं हो सकती so this this problem always persisted therefore she was murdered in a conspiracy after four years of rule so this became a major challenge for her being a woman for the first time in in the entire history to claim herself as the as the ruler so pehla challenge to yahi tha dusra ye ki intutmish ke kai bete abhi bhi zinda the aur jaisa jaisa mughal authority ke waqt kaha jata hai mughal rule ke waqt kaha jata hai ki ya to aap तख्त पे होंगे या तो ताबूत में होंगे तो अगर आप दावेदारी पेश करते हैं अपनी आ, सत्ता के लिए तो या तो आप सत्ता में होंगे या तो आप तख्त पे होंगे या तो आप तख्ते तौस पे बैठे होंगे राजा बनकर या फिर आप अपने भाइयों से लड़ते हुए मारे जाए अगर आपको रूलर बनने की दावेदारी पेश करनी है तो एक ऐसे वक्त में आ, वो अपना दावा पेश कर रही थी जब राजा के बेटे माइंड यू बेटे जिनकी लेजिट दावेदारी थी गद्दी पे वो जिंदा थे और एक नहीं कई बेटे जिंदा थे और लेजिट बेटों के अलावा कई इलेजिटिमेट बेटे भी जिंदा थे जो कि अपनी दावेदारी पेश कर सकते थे क्योंकि अगर औरत रूलर बन रही है तो इलेजिटिमेट बेटों का भी एक हक हो जाता है कि औरत से पहले हमारा हक है तो ऐसे वक्त पे एक तो पहला चैलेंज हो जाता है मुस्लिम लिबास का जो कि उसके सख्त खिलाफ होंगे तो स्टेट ऑफ अफेयर्स वो कभी रन नहीं करने देंगे सही से दूसरा जो उसके सक्सेशन uh, चैलेंजेस हैं और तीसरा इसी वक्त राजपूत का भी ऑनसॉट हो रहा है राजपूत भी अब स्ट्रांगली अपोजिशन में है मुगल एम्पायर के साथ साथ मोंगोल्स का भी खतरा बना हुआ है सो so, मोंगोल्स का खतरा स्टार्ट होता है इलतुतमिश के वक्त से और पूरे दिल्ली सल्तनत के रेन में वो मोहम्मद बिन तुगलक तक और उसके बाद भी कुछ सालों तक लगातार बना रहता है सो फाइनली आई मीन फॉर एग्जाम्पल इलतुतमिश ने मंगोल्स को डील करने के लिए अलुफ ने इसकी पॉलिसी अपनाई उसी तरह से आ, अलग अलग रूलर्स की अलग अलग पॉलिसी रही सबसे बड़ा कर्ज तो हमारे ऊपर है अलाउद्दीन खिलजी का जिसने मंगोल्स को सक्सेसफुली एक्चुअली रोका एंड देन मोहम्मद बिन तुगलक ने भी कई फोर्स बनवाए स्ट्रेटेजिक प्लेसेस पे ताकि मंगोल्स को बॉर्डर्स पे ही कंट्रोल किया जा सके वो इंकर्स इन, उनका इंकर्जन ना हो सके इंडिया के बॉर्डर्स में सल्तनत के बॉर्डर्स में तो एक खतरा मंगोल्स का भी था और वो कभी भी अटैक कर सकते थे बिकॉज दे वर वी नो द स्टोरी ऑफ मंगोल्स द लार्जेस्ट एम्पायर ऑफ द वर्ल्ड एंड इट हैड पोस्ट अ सीरियस थ्रेट टू इंडिया फॉर अबाउट हंड्रेड इयर्स थ्रू आउट थ्रू आउट तो रजिया सक्सेसफुली अपना दावा पेश करती है तो रूलर बनती है और सबसे पहला जो वो काम करती है कि uh, रूलर बनने के साथ ही वो कहती है कि मैं मुझे सुल्ताना नहीं होना मुझे सुल्तान होना है सुल्ताना कहने का मतलब है कि मैं एक औरत हूँ मैं एक औरत नहीं हूँ मैं एक पोजीशन होल्ड कर रही हूँ और अगर पोजीशन होल्ड कर इस पोजीशन का नाम सुल्तान है तो मैं भी सुल्तान हूँ दिस इज अ वेरी रेडिकल थिंग इफ यू कंसिडर द टाइम्स इन विच ही इज टॉकिंग वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट ऑलमोस्ट एट हंड्रेड ईयर्स अबाउट फ्रॉम टूडे इन मॉडर्न सोसाइटीज वी है वुमेन एट हंड्रेड ईयर्स अबो पेट्रियाल माइंड सेट के लोगों से लोगों के कोर्ट में खिरी हुई पेट्रियाल दुनिया में खिरी हुई और रूलर बनके कह रही है कि मुझे सुल्तान पोस्ट चाहिए मुझे सुल्तान कहलाना है क्योंकि ये पोस्ट मेरे लिए इम्पोर्टेंट है मुझे सुल्ताना नहीं कहलाना आई आई डोंट वांट टू बी कॉल्ड अ वुमेन आई वांट टू बी कॉल्ड अ रूलर सो इसके साथ ही कई रेडिकल चेंजेस उसने इनिशिएट किए जो पहला है वो ये है कि उसने औरतों का जो कोर्ट ड्रेस था उसने उसने उसको लेट साइड कर दिया और उसने जो रूलर्स का मर्दों का ड्रेस होता है उसको पहनना शुरू कर दिया जो हेड ड्रेस होता है जो ऊपर के कपड़े होते हैं वो पूरे मर्दों के ड्रेस हुआ करते थे जो रूलर्स पहना करते थे उसको उसने पहनना शुरू कर दिया तो यहां से एक रेडिकल अप्रोच दिखना शुरू होता है रजिया का फैक्ट उसने अपना चेहरा ढंगना बंद कर दिया इमेजिन वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द इस्लामिक रूलर्स इस्लामिक सोसाइटी उस वक्त 
जहाँ पे एक औरत रूलर बनती है और वो ओपनली क्लेम करती है कि मुझे अपना चेहरा नहीं ढकना वेन शी वुड राइड ऑन दी हॉर्स शी वुड राइड विदर फेस ओपन With her face open, visible to everyone, and that was bizarre. That was a new thing for that would be a new thing for everyone because this was a non non negotiable thing in the with the, as far as the rules of polemas were concerned. So I mean, अगर कोई आम इंसान ऐसा कर रहा होता, अगर कोई आम नोबल ऐसा कर रहा होता, या उसकी वाइफ ऐसा कर रही होती, तो उसको शायद मौत की सजा दे दी जाती. तो एक ऐसे वक्त में इस्लामिक पोलेमास के साथ डील करते हुए वो इतने रेडिकल चेंजेस अपने अपियरेंस में ला रही है अपने ट्रीटमेंट में ला रही है तो इसलिए मुझे रजिया का रे बहुत पसंद आता है सिर्फ चार साल का ही है लेकिन उसने तहलका मचा दिया फिर उसने एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन को लाइनअप करने के लिए कुछ अपने सपोर्टर्स को कोर्ट में इंट्रोड्यूस करना शुरू कोर्ट में उनको पोजिशन देने शुरू किए तबरील खान एक बड़ा नाम आता है उसमें और कुछ नाम आते हैं उस कबीर खान है जो लाहौर का गवर्नर हुआ करता था तो ऑफ कोर्स ये तो सारे रूलर्स करते हैं जब भी आप रूलर होते हैं तो आप चाहते हैं कि आप आपको सपोर्ट करने वाले लोग लोग आपके लीडरशिप के पोजीशन में हो जिनको आप अच्छे से कंट्रोल कर सकें और जिनको आप जिनसे आप राजकाज अच्छे से चला सकें कोर्स दिस इज वेरी कॉमन बट हर डूइंग इट वॉज अगेन वुड बी वेरी टैक्टिकल बिकॉज उस वक्त ये मानना कि कौन मेरे भरोसे का है कौन मेरे भरोसे का नहीं है जबकि टर्की तुर्कानी जहलगानी के लोग जो 40 नोबल्स का ग्रुप है वो लगातार आपको डी करने की कोशिश कर रहे हैं आपके भाई आपके खिलाफ लगातार साजिश करने की साजिश करने की कोशिश कर रहे हैं यू नो टू 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 टेक दीज डिसीजन इन सच कंफ्यूजिंग टाइम्स फॉर हर अगेन इट्स फॉर मी इट्स इट शुड बी फुल ऑफ एडमिशन एक बहुत बड़ा चेंज उसने ये किया दिल्ली सल्तनत के पॉलिटिकल स्ट्रक्चर में कि उसने टर्किश नोबल्स की जो मोनोपोली थी पावर के ऊपर उसको खत्म कर दिया सो so, इसका एक मैं बैकग्राउंड दे दूं क्योंकि मोहम्मद गोरी के साथ जो रूलर्स आए इंडिया में दे वर टर्किश सो द मुगल्स वर टर्को अफगान रूलर्स बिफोर दैट द रूलर्स ऑफ डेली दिल्ली सल्तनत रूलर्स दे वर टर्किश रूलर्स राइट so when they invade we call it the in the turkish invasion when the moguls came when babur defeated ibrahim lodi it was not the turkish rule it was called the turko afghan rule uh, so moguls ke pehle delhi ke court mein turkish nobles ki turkish leadership ki monopoly rahi aur razia ne kisi tarah se razia ne apne steps se us monopoly ko lagbhag khatam kar diya उसने सबसे पहले क्या किया उसने इंडियन मुस्लिम्स को रिक्रूट करना शुरू किया सो टर्किश नोबल्स हैड दिस सेंस ऑफ सुपीरियोरिटी दैट दे आर द प्योर मुस्लिम्स दे आर द प्योर वंस एंड दे हैव द ब्लड राइट टू रूल ब्लड राइट टू बी इन द कोर्ट बी इन द कोर्ट ऑफ दिल्ली सल्तनत एंड दैट मोनोपोली वाज ब्रोकन फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम बाय रजिया व्हेन शी स्टार्टेड इनिशिएटिंग मुस्लिम इंडियन मुस्लिम्स इनटू हर कोर्ट बिकॉज़ टर्किश टर्किश मुस्लिम्स डिड नॉट लाइक इंडियन मुस्लिम्स दे दे लुक्ड अप लुक्ड डाउन अपॉन इंडियन मुस्लिम्स बिकॉज uh, बहुत सारे सोर्सेज में आप पढ़ेंगे आपको देखने को मिलेगा अगर कुछ पदाइयों नहीं जैसे लोगों के सोर्सेज आप पढ़ लें तो वहां पर आपको साफ देखने को मिलेगा कि इंडियन मुस्लिम्स को लेकर कितनी हिकारत की नजर नजर है टर्किश मुस्लिम्स की तो उसने इंडियन मुस्लिम्स को रिक्रूट करना शुरू किया बिकॉज साफ पता था कि टर्किश मुस्लिम सारे जो है कोर्ट में उसके खिलाफ सो ऑफकोर्स शी हैड टू वील पावर एंड शी हैड टू फाइंड आउट हर बेस सो फर्स्ट थिंग शी डेड इज ब्रेकिंग दी मोनोपली ऑफ टर्किश रूल इन दी दिल्ली सल्तनत कोर्ट इसका एक सबसे बड़ा एग्जाम्पल देखने को तब मिला जब उसने आप एक हबशी को सो हबशी इज अ टर्म यूज फॉर यूज फॉर दीज डेज इट्स अ रेशियल टर्म बट बैक देन इट मैं समन केम फ्रॉम द रीजन ऑफ एबिसनिया सो ही वॉज ही वॉज रिक्रूटेड बाई रजिया सुल्ताना एज एज हिज Uh, I think private bodyguard, something like that, and he was made the head of stables. So, a, 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 a,
इनफैक्ट ये बहुत कॉन्ट्रोवर्शियल uh, भी रहा है क्योंकि कुछ क्लेमेंट्स कुछ क्लेम्स जो पहले आए रिसेंट uh, हिस्टोरियोग्राफी के पहले ये क्लेम किया जाता था कि देर वॉज दिस देर वॉज अ रिलेशनशिप ऑफ फिजिकल इंटीमेसी ऑल्सो बिटवीन दी दिस हफी नोबल ऑफ रजिया सुल्ताना एंड रजिया सुल्ताना हर सेल्फ बिकॉज उसके लिए क्लेम ये दिया जाता था कि जब भी वो घोड़े पे बैठती थी कि वो लिटरली लिफ्ट हर अप एंड नोबल्स जो थे ऑफकोर्स नोबल्स को मौका मिल जाता था कि अब उसके बारे में बातें बनाए तो रजिया सुल्ताना के और हफी उसके जो उसका जो नोबल था जिसको उसने रिक्रूट किया था उनके अफेयर को लेकर कई सारी स्टोरीज चलाई जाने लगी कोर्ट के अंदर तो ये एक बहुत बड़ा इल्जाम रजिया के ऊपर लगने लगा कि वॉट इज शी डूइंग जरूर When, uh, of course, it would be very, uh, it would be full of hatred for the Islamic ulemas, the the Qazis, the Qazis who are functioning in the court. They they can't see this. But, uh, recent historiography, which is shown, is that Malik Yakut, which is the name of Malik Yakut, and between Razia and Razia, there was no intimate relationship between them. 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 वो सारी जो बातें बनाई गई हैं वो वो कोर्ट के लोगों के द्वारा बनाई गई ताकि रजिया को अल्टीमेटली डी थ्रोन किया जा सके और इसका कोई जिक्र किसी कंटेप्ररी सोर्स में नहीं मिलता है पहली बात तो ये और इस तरह का कोई भी किस्सा भी हमें किसी ना ही रिटर्न सोर्स में मिलता है ना ही कहीं और से सुनने को मिलता है ना ही किसी ओरल सोर्सेज से मिलता है तो इसको आई मीन रीसेंट हिस्टोरियोग्राफी में इस इस स्टोरी को पूरी तरह से डिस्कार्ड कर दिया गया है रीसेंट जो साइंटिफिक स्कॉलरशिप आई है मीडिया में दिया गया तो हाँ मतलब ये एक बहुत कॉन्ट्रोवर्शियल पार्ट रहा रजिया सुल्ताना के लाइफ का बट जो रजिया सुल्ताना के फेवर में काम करता है वो होता है इसके जो भी स्टेप्स मैंने बताया जिसमें वो पोलिटिकल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन को पूरी तरह से चेंज कर कर देती है आई मीन कंटेम्प्रेरी सोर्सेज में सिराज कहते हैं कि बंगाल से लेकर लखनऊटी तक जितने भी अमीर थे जितने भी अमीर थे जितने भी नोबल्स थे उन सब ने अपने अपने अपनी अपनी सोवरिटी रजिया सुल्ताना के सामने पेश कर दी और उन्होंने रजिया सुल्तान को सुल्तान की तरह एक्सेप्ट कर लिया तो ये एक बहुत बड़ा रेफरेंस है रजिया की ग्रोइंग पावर का एंड इट्स जस्ट बिकॉज शी मेड दीज चेंजेस इन टू दी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ऑफ द कोर्ट शी स्टार्ट बिल्डिंग पावर she started recruiting people who who was who were supporting her who were with his side with her side aur cheeze jo badi radical ki razia sultana ne usme se ek cheez in fact do cheeze main discuss karna chahta hu pehla to maine bataya usne in fact sabse pehle maine bataya ki usne parda rakhna band kar diya dusra she started she started to hold open courts back then uh if there is a court being held there is some issue that has come to the sultan and kisi cheez pe sunwai chal rahi hai these uh, sunwais would not be open so she started this change she started this uh change in delhi sultanate where she started holding open courts apart from this what what fascinated me was the fact that she would ride in the front of the army as a leader Let me remind you, this was the time जब इंडिया के रूलर्स सल्तनत के रूलर्स खासकर इंडिया के जो डायनेस्टीज हुआ करती थी वो वॉर में जब लड़ने जाती थी तो सामने सैनिक होंगे उनके पीछे घोड़े होंगे उनके पीछे और कुछ कतारें होंगी राजा कहीं पीछे बीच में खड़ा होगा अपने हाथी पे बैठा हुआ सेफ दूर से देखता हुआ कि क्या चल रहा है In these times, here comes a woman ruler who is heading her army on a horse right in the front in the battlefield right so i i don't think any any other ruler would do this right i mean this is one of her one of the rarest examples again about razia so there are so many facts which fascinate me about razia and i i i feel that she has been the most less discussed uh, rural ruler of uh, delhi sir and these are the reasons why she should be discussed more it's not only the political achievement why a ruler should be discussed in fact uh, these are the changes for for which we should explore more about someone
then uh, contemporary historians like Minhaju Sira say that uh, uh, Razia was a great patron of the learned people. She would keep many learned poets and scholars in her court. And she would uh, dispense justice. I mean, uh, as I already told you, she started holding open courts. So she was a great dispenser of justice. So with all these qualities, she would she made a very fine ruler. In the cultural aspects, she she started establishing libraries. She started establishing madrasas, and she started uh, so many works in academics because. Uh, Hindu scriptures were being uh, read, they were being researched upon, and new books were being written. So it's not only in the field of politics that she started making changes, it's not only about in the field of uh, control of the court, but also in, uh, culturally that she started, she initiated so many changes. It's not only some radical changes, the, 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 the radical approach she brought in. But as a ruler, as someone who, who can be an inclusive ruler, study of Hindu scriptures, establishing academic institutions, libraries, madrasas, all these things, these are these are cultural aspects. These are very appreciable things. There are very few rulers who did this. I mean, Firoz Shah Tughlaq is one. Uh, of course, Akbar was put to show these up there. Then, uh, there is a famous ruler from Kashmir, Zainul Abidin, again a very less discussed name. So Akbar and Zainul Abidin, dono ko mein lagbhag equal maanta hoon, anke caliber mein, aur jikon mein khas kar jis tarah societal or cultural changes introduced kiye. In fact, most of the Mughal rulers, till the time of Aurang Zeb, they, all of them proved to be inclusive. So, yeah, so these aspects also fascinate, uh, fascinate me about the rule of Raja Sultan. As I talked about uh, the challenge of Mongols, so if Tutmish used to treat the challenge of Mongols with the policy of aloofness, we don't have to meddle with the Mongols, we don't have to be in conflict with Mongols, let's be aloof. But Razia uh, had a different policy, she had, she proposed and she followed a policy which was called the policy of appeasement. So her way of dealing with Mongols was also again filled with diplomacy. The way she became the ruler of Delhi Sultanate, in the same way with using her diplomacy, she started dealing the threat of Mongols. Now, now we are talking about how the rule of the rule end. So I don't like this part of the story because uh, Razia being my favorite character of Delhi Sultanate. Uh, this part of the story is so tragic that I wouldn't. Uh, <laughs> uh, if a story was written over it, it would be a very tragic love story, let's say. I mean, uh, most of the historians agree that it was a, a love story, and they. So here it goes. So so uh, during the time of uh, rebel, during during the time of her rule of four years, she was also constantly dealing with the rebellions. So the two major rebellions that happened one was in Lahore. Uh, during her time, and the second was uh, in Tabar Hind. Uh, so, she actually uh, was very successful in dealing with the with the rebellion of Lahore. She marched with her army to the ruler of Lahore, and the ruler of Lahore instantly submitted. So there was no uh, there was no problem in conquering Lahore. But uh, as far as Tabar Hind was concerned, uh, the ruler in Tabar Hind, Altunia, he posed a problem. And she rose in rebellion against the Delhi Sultanate. So now to control Altunia, of course, she had to she had to march. Um, it was said that Altunia was already in connection with the Turkish faction of the Delhi court, Delhi Sultanate, the Turkani Jahlgani uh, uh, nobles, and. Unka jo secret pact tha, usi ki wajah se ek saazish create ki gai uh, Razia Sultana ko dethrone karne ki. However, she knew about it, she must be knowing about it and she marched uh, to uh, defeat Altunia. But uh, she was, by treachery, she was captured there. She was captured or uh, Delhi mein uska jo, uh, uska jo main uh, Noble who was the Habshi ruler, Yakut, Malik Yakut, 
he was killed by these turkish nobles so turkish nobles ne conspiracy rachi aljunia ke sath milkar uh, razia sultan jaati hai aljunia se ladai karne kyunki aljunia rebellion pe utar chuka hai tabar hind aur jab wo wahan pe uh, threat face kar rahi hai tab unhone yahan pe malik yakut ka murder kar diya the most trusted person of razia sultan aur wahan par razia sultan ko capture kar liya jata hai but the story does not end there after that um, even i am not very sure about it, about how it happened because it's not been very discussed in the basic books which i have read but there is this love story that goes on between aldunia and nazia sultana and somehow they get married they get married after the love story and they they start marching back to delhi they start marching back to delhi to capture delhi she starts marching back with the help of aldunia to capture delhi but the forces under uh, the uh, control of turkani jhalgani of delhi sultanate finally defeats razia and razia has to run away so uh, jab wo bhag rahi hoti hai wapas delhi se bachte hue to uh, khukhars ke ilake se wo guzarti hai haryana mein ye jagah hai और वहां पे खोखर्स जो थे वो डकैत हुआ करते थे और एक कॉन्स्परेसी के थ्रू खोखर्स उसका मर्डर कर देते हैं क्योंकि उनकी कुछ पुरानी दुश्मनी होती है और ऐसा मानते हैं कि कुछ कॉन्स्परेसी भी रही होगी टर्कानी चहलगानी के साथ तो खोखर्स ने फाइनली रजिया को मर्डर कर दिया और वहीं पे उनकी कब्र भी है विच इज नॉट क्वाइट आई मीन दिस्टोरियंस आर नॉट येट क्वाइट श्योर because some of the historians also claim that there is this uh, mausoleum so there is this uh, uh kabr which is also somewhere in purani delhi uh, usko bhi razia sultan ki kabr ki claim kiya jata hai i'm not very sure about that story so i wouldn't love to go there so this is the tragic end of razia sultan going to tackle the uh, rebellion of altunia and the murder of malik yakut razia mari Altunia and coming back with a force to recapture Delhi, but then getting defeated and running away and finally being killed by murdered by the Khokhar Rajputs. Sorry, the Khokhar Dacoits. Or, कुछ भी हो रजिया के खात्मे के साथ रजिया के रूल के अंत के साथ फिर से establish हो जाता है कि Delhi Sultanate में जो चलती है वो तुर्कानी चहलगानी की चलती है. उनका बढ़ता हुआ पावर फिर से पूरी दुनिया के सामने आ जाता है सबको पता है कि जो रूलर बनेगा वो तुर्कानी चहलगानी की मर्जी से ही बनेगा तो उनकी मोनापली वापस री होती है रजिया जिसने मोनापली को खत्म किया था इंडियन मुस्लिम्स को और हफशीज को अपने कोर्ट में लेकर उस मोनापली को वापस री करते हैं रजिया का मर्डर करके जस्ट बिकॉज ऑफ द फैक्ट दैट दे कुडेंट सी अमेन ऑन द थ्रोन ऑफ डेली सल्तनत फाइनली इस मोनोपली ऑफ पावर को तुर्कानी चहलगानी को ही इनफैक्ट पूरी तरह से डिसमेंटल करने वाला एक रूलर आता है वो रजिया के बाद आता है इस नेम इज बलबन द मोस्ट पावरफुल रूलर ऑफ दिल्ली सल्तनत बिफोर द खिलजी सो द मोस्ट पावरफुल रूलर ऑफ स्लेव डेनेस्टी सो दिस इज दी स्टोरी ऑफ रजिया तो इन शॉर्ट रजिया बिन सुल्तान और रजिया सुल्तान the daughter of Bintukmish leaves her mark in the history of India not because of her political conquests not because of territorial expansion but because of the radical changes that she introduces uh, after becoming the sultan after becoming the first woman sultan of India and uh, it it must be known to people uh, very few people even talk about Razia. especially in delhi i see very less number of people talking about her because very less number of people actually study history they they know very less about delhi sultanate even when they study delhi sultanate they just visit kitab kutub minar and they think this is it they don't want to explore so yeah the, the razia's aspects did uh, fascinate me to a bit because maine alauddin khilji ke bare mein padha to paya ki बहुत ही जबरदस्त रूलर है वो बहुत सारा पावर बिल्ड करता है बहुत पॉलिटिकल एक्सपेंशन करता है अलाउद्दीन खिलजी इंडिया को मंगोलों से बचाता है मार्केट 
कंट्रोल पॉलिसी लाता है एग्रीकल्चरल चेंजेस लाता है मिलिट्री में चेंजेस लाता है बहुत सारे रेडिकल चेंजेस बलाउद्दीन खिलजी लाता है और बहुत लंबे वक्त तक रूल भी करता है उसी तरह से मोहम्मद बिन तुगलक के बारे में पढ़ते हैं अ रूलर हु वाज हु हैज बीन मोस्ट मिसअंडरस्टूड रूलर ऑफ इंडिया तो जिस तरह से अलाउद्दीन खिलजी के चेंजेस जो है उसके सारे लाए हुए चेंजेस सक्सेसफुल होते हैं मोहम्मद बिन तुगलक जितने भी चेंजेस लाता है सही इंटेंशन के साथ लाता है बट ट्रेजिकली वो सारे के सारे फेल हो जाते हैं सो दीज टू आर वेरी फेमस केस स्टडीज ऑफ दिल्ली सल्तनत बट people do fail to understand that it's not always the political conquest sometimes which uh, and it's not always the political conquest and the economic changes by the rulers which always matter sometimes these uh, rulers come who who leave a mark because of some other aspects just like azia sultan thank you so much